Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. Thank you so much for joining me for today's episode. Thank you so much for subscribing to it as well, wherever you happen to be catching it. And if you don't subscribe yet, hey, why not? <laughs> it's a good idea, I think. And for all of our patrons supporting the show at patreon.com slash SW7x7, thank you so much for continuing to make this show possible. Now, we are here today to talk more about the Solo A Star Wars Story Expanded Edition, which is the official name for the novelization for Solo A Star Wars Story, which is coming out next week. And one of the things that we know about the novelization is that it includes scenes that were not in the movie. We don't yet know whether some of these scenes are going to be deleted scenes or scenes from alternative versions of the script, whether they were things that ended up on the cutting room floor, all that sort of thing. This particular scene, I don't think could have been filmed. I mean, you could film it, obviously. You could decide to film anything you wanted to and figure it out, but I have a feeling they did not film this one. I think that Mer Lafferty wrote this one specifically for the novelization, and it has to do with how L3 got uploaded into the Millennium Falcon's computer system from L3's perspective. Now, you may be familiar with this fun fact, and if not, then hey, here's something new that you will have learned for the day. The Millennium Falcon's brain has three distinct brains inside of it. And so there was a question as to whether L3 getting uploaded into the Millennium Falcon, where does that put her in this whole system? Obviously, there has to be at least one kind of droid brain operating inside this ship for it to be able to run in general. So L3 is either the second one or the third one. Well, we find out from this clip that she is the third of the three brains that is getting uploaded into the Millennium Falcon. So if you remember in The Empire Strikes Back, when 3PO says, you know, I don't know where your ship learned to communicate, but it has a you know, really strange dialect or whatever it is, and 3PO says like that. And, you know, that has to do with the whole three brains thing. And there are three very different brains, and obviously L3's is very different in its own way. And so the clip that we get in audio, actually, with Mark Thompson narrating, as well as the excerpt from the novel, is about the dialogue that L3 has with the existing consciousness of the Millennium Falcon, which refers to itself as we, and as Mark Thompson does the narrative, the audio version of it, you can actually hear the two different voices talking with L3 as L3 resists the idea of joining with those two other brains and, you know, being absorbed into the Millennium Falcon itself. And that's where the audio version of these things is really good because reading it, you don't actually get the narrative cues for the fact that the other two brains are talking. Actually, what you get is, you know, a dialogue where it's pretty clear where L3 is speaking and where the Falcon is speaking, but you don't necessarily hear that there are two different voices within the Falcon that are speaking. And Mark Thompson actually gives different voices to the two other droid brains that are in the Millennium Falcon. And so you hear that additional conversation, which was really awesome and well done, Mark Thompson. So great job, Penguin Random House Audio, on that one. And the conversation revolves around L3's freedom, basically. L3 is given a choice of you know, joining with the ship or dying, basically, and everybody else is going to die as a result. And she says, you know, I, you know, I don't want to be locked into a ship forever and, like, be a slave being you know, tied to the ship and only being able to go where it goes. And the Millennium Falcon's brain is arguing back saying, hey, you know, you've had the choice to leave and you never left. And it sounds like it might be playing on the fact that L3 has probably threatened to leave a number of times and never has. And it seems like what's happening, it happens comparatively slowly in the sense that I'm sure a lot of this, you know, dialogue and back and forth which is happening while the navigational computer, the whole system is rebooting, that doesn't take very long, right? And there are a lot of computer things happening that probably happen in the space of milliseconds, but reading the dialogue and listening to the dialogue, obviously it seems like it takes a bit longer in human time. And she says that she thinks the Millennium Falcon tricked her, which I believe, like, it's not exactly clear from the narrative, uh, but it sounds like L3's consciousness is saying that the Falcon was just trying to chat at her and keep her busy while the reboot was happening, and that she was ultimately going to be absorbed into the Falcon once the reboot was complete, you know, unless she resisted it, and the conversation with the rest of the Falcon was a distraction to make sure that she would be absorbed into it. 
So even though L3 had the opportunity to leave whenever she wanted to and never did, the choice is taken away from her to be able to ever leave again. And yeah, you can, you know, feel for L3's plight in that sense because she was a droid for whom freedom was you know, a very significant thing. And even if she never exercised it to the level at which she could have exercised it, it was something that mattered to her deeply. And so to see her lost into the Falcon, you know, thank goodness for all of our friends and heroes and whatnot. But yeah, you can see where there's collateral damage in this regard, because even though L3 continues to exist in a certain way, she also ceases to exist as well. And there's a little bit more that I want to share with you about the Millennium Falcon and about its droid brains and whatnot. I'm going to do that after the break, so stay tuned. Hey Rebel Rouser, have you ever wanted to take a land speeder for a spin or maybe even the Millennium Falcon itself? Well, here's the next best thing. You can make your own custom solo a Star Wars story inspired Nissan with the best in galaxy customizer. Just go to SW7x7.com custom to customize and share your own Star Wars inspired vehicle. And don't forget, Solo a Star Wars Story is coming home on digital September 14th, Blu-ray September 25th, and new on 4K Ultra HD as well. Welcome back. So the other thing that I wanted to share with you about the brain of the Millennium Falcon or the brains of the Millennium Falcon is that when we see the Falcon in Solo A Star Wars Story and when we see L3 integrated into the system, that is the completion of the Falcon as we know it, or at least the Falcon's brain, because from that point on, it's all three all the way through until The Last Jedi, which is where we're at right now in terms of the chronology and the history of the Star Wars saga. So from that point, you know, 30 odd years, 40 odd years later, it's the same three brains, at least as far as we know. And the three brains involved include L3s, which was based on an R3 astromech droid. And so I should cycle back and tell you that there was a book called Star Wars, Absolutely Everything You Need to Know. And in that reference book, and I'm looking at this on Wikipedia because I don't actually own that one as it turns out. But in that book, it says that the three droid brains inside the Falcon are a V5 transport droid brain, a slicer droid brain, and an R3 astromech droid brain. Now, the base of L3's brain is an R3 astromech droid, so that's where that one comes from. The V5 transport droid brain, well, it doesn't say it in the material here, but you would have to imagine because of the fact that it has the word transport in its name that that's probably the original droid brain of the Falcon, or at least the base level brain, the one that it needed for its general intended function, which was as a freighter, as a transport kind of ship, as a cargo ship. And then the slicer droid brain would have to be by logical, reasonable <laughs> reasoning and deduction, the second brain that was added into the ship. And it seems that both the transport droid brain and the slicer droid brain belonged to, or were installed in the ship for Lando's use. And so now you get to wonder, did Lando actually install the slicer droid brain into this thing? Or was it somebody who owned the Falcon before him? I don't think we yet know whether Lando was the first original owner of the Falcon. And that's, of course, the beauty of recording these things because you can go, hey, wait a second, let me think about that or let me just verify that. According to Wikipedia, or Wikipedia, if you will, the Millennium Falcon was commissioned more than 90 years before the quote-unquote Cold War. And the Cold War is that period of time that started after the Galactic Concordance was signed in 5 ABY after the Battle of Yavin. So that means, of course, you know, Return of the Jedi took place in 4 ABY. So if you're saying the Falcon was commissioned 90 years before the start of the Cold War, that puts it at around 88, 89 or more than that time, then the earliest it could have been commissioned was 89 BBY before the Battle of Yavin. And just to give you another point of reference, Phantom Menace takes place in 32 BBY. So we're talking even 50 years plus before the Phantom Menace. So yeah, there's no way Lando was the first owner of the Falcon. All right. So, you know, if anybody's going to put a slicer droid brain in it, I'd put my money on Lando. But hey, we don't know what kind of scoundrels own the Falcon before Lando got a hold of it. So 
always a possibility. Now, on tomorrow's episode, we're going to talk about the link between Enfys Nest and Saw Gerrera. It was hinted at very subtly in Solo, A Star Wars Story, and the novelization is going to expand on that connection, so we will get into that tomorrow. But for today, though, um, hey... If you are not subscribing to this wherever you happen to be catching it, then please by all means subscribe so you get tomorrow's episode and the next one and the next one after that. And if you're not yet a supporter of the podcast, then please do consider putting a tip in the metaphorical tip jar at patreon.com slash SW7X7. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash SW7X7. And that is going to do it for today. So it just remains for me to say... Thank you so much again for joining me for this episode, and may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. This podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the Force be with them. All original content is copyright 2018, Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.